afterward let's talk about a little bit about the uh, lab sheets like i said it is very similar we have already talked about the split and stripe and sys std in if you remember that was a package and inside that package we had another package sub package and all together we can import this guy to use some some uh, built-in functions etc so we have a guy in here uh, that's the definition of CSV. We want to, talk, to work with the CSV files, which are uh, data separated files. That means we have some sort of, that could be a CSV example. The first one usually is the header of the file, and then you have loads of the data separated by the comma. That's the definition of the CSV file. If you're interested to read more, this Wikipedia page will help you to get a little bit more information. But anyway, that's the, an example of the CSV file. We want to work with these things. For these examples and lab sheets, we are using this website. This website is this uh, is kind of a, a statistical website with lots of data about different things, about geographical information, etc. You can find very similar these things. In the real world, when you work on some, some examples, you are faced with a very similar situation. The data you want to work with, you want to clean the data. They are available in the website, very similar to this one, up to your topic. And as you can see, these data are downloadable. And then you, after the download, you want to work with them in the Python to clean them and do a lot of stuff. So for this example, we use two data set of these guys, which is the first one is the real estate data. As you can see, the first one is the headline. And then you have the data for different uh, cities. That's the real estate uh, data. Let's close this one. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, that would be your data set. We are working with two different data sets in here, which is the real estate sales and police crime report. Okay. Uh, this task is very similar to the task we used to do uh, previously, the real estate one uh, in the beginning. So, we want to write, I will ask you to write a uh, re city.py script that only records the pertaining to real estate sale in that city. For example, if I run the module and say Python re city.py and only one argument, then I want to have the real estate information of that specific city, which are these. Like we discussed, if you open the uh, this guy, which is the data. If you search for the name of this city, copy and control F and put that in here, you can see 33 entries are available in this file. So that line, that line, that line, that line, as you can see, these are the lines we are interested. So in our code, we are looking for a script that extracts only those specific lines of that specific city. That would be something like that. So just you extract the lines. So to give you some hints how to write the code, I want to show you, uh, for example, the solution of this example. You should try it yourself later, but I want to show you the solution this time to have a little bit more understanding for the people who actually were struggling in the exam. So I want to, I'm trying to show you some example to know what how it is going to be. I have the uh, solutions in here in this folder, some of the solution for myself, and I'm trying to show you everything in the Visual Studio code. That's very interesting IDE you can use. It is uh, cross-platform. We can install it on any platform. We can change the coloring, everything in here. I hope it is completely visible for you and you can see everything. So let's have a look at the Recity example. That's the Recity, Recity example. And you can see it has a lot of plugins. It asks you to install the plugins. Even it has a terminal you can run the code you are developing in here in the terminal, see the results. So that's a very, very good, I would say the uh, IDE from Microsoft, you can use it. I don't want to install something at the moment, so I will escape it now. Okay, so what was the question? The question was, if you have this file, we discussed in here, the real estate file, I want to write a Python code which takes one argument from, from the command line, and then extract the information of that specific city. So it would be something like that. First of all, I need to import sys because I want to use uh, read lines 
from that specific package. And then I want to take the name of the city. You remember uh, argv was a function inside the sys package. See, that's the beauty of this ID. When you keep your mouse and closer on that specific function, it tries to pop up and show you everything about that guy. So hopefully you should be able to scroll and read the things and the stuff's in here. So that's, that's the interesting thing about this guy. And like I said, if you don't like the, the coloring, everything, you can go to the yeah, setting and change the coloring, different styles, etc. How to do that? You should jump to Google and search it. And you'll find a lot of good examples and pages that shows that to you, that show that to you. Okay, so I'm trying to um, show you how it could be uh, being a good self learner. Okay, so I get the uh, the name of the city in the argument. You know that we will discuss that previously. You know that arg zero is the name of the function. So I have seen some student for the last week before the exam, or maybe on the last week, they were struggling with, the, uh, with this concept. The first guy, arg0, is the name of the file, which we, we, we don't need that at all. We need the second argument, which is started from one. You know, we start from zero. The second argument then would be the one. So I read all the contents into the lines. You know, read lines, reads everything for you. And that will be an empty line at the end of the line. So I set a counter. I jump into the while loop. I would say for the counter less than the length of the line. That means I want to process all the lines in here. Then I read the first line and split them using the uh, using the comma. You know what what the split does actually generate a list into the token. You know the type is list. That's very interesting point of the. Visual Studio Code. So that says that's a list. Okay, I'll take the first line of this guy. I'll take the first line, which is the which is this guy. Okay, and then I will say if the token, the first, if the token, uh, the second item inside this list is equal to city. Okay, the second item is city, and then print that line a strip print that specific line and then increase the counter back to the type continue until you finish the whole loop okay so that would be a good example of the uh, actually this task okay so i don't want to go to through more details so that would be a good example then so in this task we are going to do that in the next task we are going to write a python script output on the records pertaining the real estate sales on that specific day. So I want to say what are the sales on Wednesday. So it prints for me the results on Wednesday. See, that's very interesting, isn't it? Also, we want to write a script which uh, outputs only the position of the field with the that data. So if I want to say, what is the position of price in the data? See, what is the, what is the, usage of this strategy. The usage of this strategy is sometimes you have, you know in your data very specific things. You know in, uh, you know, uh, for example, that longitude is the last column of the data. So you can start saying, okay, find extract for me that longitude information for me. But sometimes, that would be the case, you don't know where is the specific information, where is the location of that information. So for example, in this example, we try to understand what's the location of information nine. Okay, so we want to do that. So price is, sorry, the price, it is in location nine. And also we want to say, okay, in this guy, extract the price for me only. The last one, I said, where, what is the location? of the price in the data. In this one, I want to say, please extract the price information for me. That's a similar task on the crime reports, another data set, as you can see in here. Okay, so we have the same similar data set, the header in the first line, and then we have some information in here, which are separated with the comma. Okay, so that's a comma, that's a comma, 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 and so on. So that's the whole story. 
And so you want to do different things. I don't want to go through these things. Let me see what other functions I have. I have the first one, prime fill. I don't have it. I don't uh, have refill. Okay, I don't want to go through that. That's okay. That's very similar thing you can do yourself. So they have different tasks in here. You need to work with that to understand what's exactly um, we want to do. We can also do some sort of the queries. We can say that could be instead of a field of something or something like that, the argument should be some sort of the uh, matching or condition or something like that. Okay, so that would be the task also. And uh, it could be a field of value, something like that. So I don't want to go through this because I have more interesting stuff. Like I said, you can write some other Python code to do this thing. So that's the lab sheet one. You should do it yourself. So let's close these guys in here and then let's go to lab, lab sheet five two. That's very similar things you should do. Again, we have a data set in here and data set of latitude and longitude. It is from city data, very similar thing. I want to extract some information of the uh, uh, NC, probably city. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, very similar, very similar. So one of the student is microphone is on. Can you please? Uh, mute your microphone. The screen hasn't changed. The screen cannot see that. Okay, so we didn't see the solution you showed up. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, okay, so I will stop sharing and I will share again. Hopefully this time you will see the results. So can you see the screen now? Can you see the screen now? Okay, so let me change the screen to see. And is the screen changing? Yes, okay, sorry for that. I should keep the chat live in here to make sure I see all your questions in here. So uh, did you see this example I showed you? Did you see this example I discussed? Can you answer someone in the class, please? Did you see? Did you see this example I discussed? So there is no answer for my question. So I imagine you have said yes. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. Like I said, we have lab sheets in here. So you have lab sheet two, which has this information. The next thing I want to talk about is an, another concept, which is called the binary search. Okay, what's the concept of binary search? Let's close it. What's the concept of binary search? Uh, the binary search is something like that. Let me show you some other pages, which is very interesting. The binary search gives you, given an array, for example, imagine I have an array, no matter what language it is. Don't forget about the curly braces, etc. I have an array in here, and I want to find, for example, what is the location, if there is this number inside this guy, element x, is present at line uh, at line six at, at index six. So that's the binary search. That's the whole story. So you start from the first location in the left most side and then check if it is equal to the thing you want to have. And then if it is not go to the next one, go to the next one and finally return back to the location you are facing it. So it can be implemented in any different languages. So you can have a text like this with a space in here. You can get rid of the space yourself and make it a little bit more clear. And then the question would be, uh, write a Python script which writes the first digit in the text for a standard output, okay? So that means if I have this line of text, 
I want to search if it is any digit inside that text and the first digit I want to print it out. This is not the task we need to do because that's an example. There is no name of the file you should output, just as an example to show you. Or for the first number, that would be another example. I may ask you uh, if you have, there is no question, if you have this line of text, so what is the first number you can find? The script which writes the first number in the text, okay? So that will be the first number. So all these concepts are the concept of the linear search. To solve this, this kind of problems, you need to work out on linear search, okay? So the linear search, uh, these tasks are all search tasks. In each case, the solution requires that we search for something. It could be leading spaces like this. We want to say if there is a leading space in the text, or it could be searching for a first digit or first number. All of these cases are the, uh, the search cases, searching something inside the string, which is called uh, the solution for that would be the linear search. The general case for doing that is something like that. What is the solution for doing for implementing the linear search? The solution is like that. We set a counter first, then we jump into the, all the different cases and check the criteria we want. P could be the criteria for us. For example, if the string we are talking about is something like that, and then the criteria is if that's not blank, if that's not empty, something like that. So I would say jump into the string I have got already, okay, and then uh, for less than the length of the S, for less than the length of this, what is the length of this? Number of spaces in here, and then M A R Y space H A D blah 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 blah. So that's the length of this guy. For the length of this guy, I check if the position I is empty or not. That would be the real, uh, the the very simple example of this concept. So for doing the linear search, you need to jump into the whole thing you have go to the one by one using a while loop and check a specific criteria in here, okay? That could be the criteria we want to check it. And you see, that's an and. You mean, that means it would be true, true only if this guy is true and this guy is true. If one of them is false, then the solution would be false. And then we are going to finish and terminate the search because uh, one of the solution has failed, okay? So you can read through that yourself. Again, that would be the same thing. I want to show you a real example, okay? So um, imagine we want to do something like that. We want to check to see if we have any space like that. And then uh, we, if we want to check to see if we have checked the whole size. Let's check for this specific string we already talked about. What was the string? The string was this guy. Okay, we want to check it. Let's see what happens in here. So I would say uh, for the for i less than the length of the s, okay, if it is because I'm in the first location, position, and then if it is empty, yes, increase it back to here, continue, continue, continue until something is not uh, empty space. When it is happen, it, it will happen in here, when I get to M. When I get to M, this condition is not satisfied. Then that means the loop is going to be finished. Then I want to check if I have checked all the positions of the non-spaces, this will give me the solution. I will say for I, that's a specific I, which I have, which I have finished the while loop, which is the location of M in here, I would ask myself if uh, it is, uh, if length, if I is less than length, if yes, that means I have finished earlier, okay? So if it is not, that means I have not finished earlier. So that could be the thing you can play with. In this example, I'm not trying to show you some specific uh, tasks, but I'm trying, that's the concept. You can play with these things to, to see if you have done something completely or not. Okay, leading space. Let's look at the examples, okay? 
write a Python script which writes that text to standard output, but with the leading space removed. I want to remove it. How we can do that? In the normal life, we used to do raw input, right? We used to say, okay, take the string, which is this string for me, and then check for the whole length of the string. And then if the first location is empty or not, if it is, and then continue until continue until I find the location of the first non-empty character, which is n. Then after I found it, I can print from that specific location to the n. What's the goal in here? The goal in here is just to get rid of this guy. It's not to get rid of these spaces in here and in here. Just I want to get rid of that. So if I get to the point which the character of that specific location is not empty, I will terminate the while loop, and then I know where I am at the moment, and then I can print it. For the first digit, how it could be solved? Okay, so imagine I have this string. I want to find the first digit inside that. I take the string using the raw input, and then I will jump into that. I will check everything using this condition, and then I will say, if location a string character of that specific location is less than zero or uh, is greater than nine what does it mean it means if that specific number is uh, something between zero and nine why because we are looking for a digit we are looking for a digit and digit is zero one two three until nine okay so i need to reflect that inside in here so i would to say Continue until you get to the end of the list, to the end of the string. And if you find the digit, why? Because I want to find the first digit. If I find the first digit, I want to finish it. So yeah, an and is okay for me. So continue until you have not approached to the end of the string and until you have not find a digit. If you have find a digit, stop it, terminate it, please. If you have got to the end of the string, terminate it, please. Okay? So that's for the termination of the end of the string. And that's the termination for the um, finding the first digit. And with the AND, we say if any of these things happens, so please terminate the loop. And in here, we have used the OR because we want to say if that specific string is less than zero or greater than nine. Okay? And Focus on this guy. I don't. I didn't say zero. I said character of zero because what you have put in here is a, is a character. It's not a number. It's not a digit. If you want to behave, uh, if you want to work with that like a digit, you need to say integer of that specific integer of s of i to convert it to an integer because now it is a character. So you should convert convert it to character. And you say how. The comparison like less than and greater than or something like that happens in here because all of them they have ASCII code like we discussed. So when you say S of I less than this guy, that means the ASCII code of this guy is compared. And then after you found the location, you have terminated the while the while loop, and then you can print that a specific location. That's the first digit. Okay. And in the first number, that's the same case. You have the case. You have the input, you have the number, and you want a while loop again, checking for the length until you get to the end, and checking for that specific location, and then putting that in here. If i is less than length of s, that means if I have not finished the whole, if I have not uh, scrolled the whole string of s, that means uh, set another counter which is j equal to the location of the previous the location I have finished already. Have another loop. Go inside the loop and say, okay, continue from that specific location and check to see if you can find another one. After you finished it, you have the location of the j. Continue in here. Continue in here. If you terminate the while loop, you will back to i, and then you say if. The location, the second location I am at the moment is at the end of the string. If it is not, go to another loop and continue. So that's just one loop. And this one is a nested loop. In this one, you finish, you continue the loop only until you satisfy these things. 
But in here, you continue the loop until this guy tell you to continue. So you mean, that means you can finish the loop once and then back to in here because this guy is under the need of the if. So that means the whole thing in here is a part of this, this if guy. Okay, so you need to back in here. So that means one is found using this while loop and then using this guy, you will find two in the first round of the while loop and you will find the three in the second round of the while loop. That looks very interesting, isn't it? Okay, so that was the third thing. And what else do we have? We have, uh, uh, we have, uh, okay, so let's recap. In this week, we discussed the binary stuff. We wanted to recap that from the previous courses probably I've had. I have provided a note for that. You can have a look at that one. We provided you with two set of the lab sheets, which you write some data, you read some data from a text file, get an argument from the command line and try to play with the data inside, inside the text file with that specific argument, okay? And then we discuss with the linear search, where is the location you actually try to find something inside the text you have, which is called which is the concept of the linear search. And you just start from the beginning, continue until you get to the end. And then we went through some example of doing linear search uh, in different cases. For example, finding the leading space in the beginning or finding the first digit inside the file or finding the first number, which I showed you here, the solution, okay? So you need to experiment it. So you can go beyond that if you're interested. For example, you can add another number somewhere in here and you can define a task for yourself to find all the number instead of only printing the first number. You can print and uh, find 123 in here and then probably a five in here. And then what could be the solution? See, if there is a while loop under the need of this if, Probably it should be another if and the whole story should be under the need of that if to say if you have finished the, the whole thing, okay? So you can experience that yourself. And then it would be another lab sheet, which I will make it open for you next Monday. So this, uh, as you could see, the linear search doesn't have any lab sheet. So we'll have two lab sheets in here and week uh, 6.1 would be for here again. Uh, although that's for six, but that's for week number five. So don't think that's for the next week we will discuss. No, you should do that this week. So the deadline for all of these guys in here on next Monday, 9 p.m. We have the lab sheet in here you can work on. And please follow all these stuff.